Hi everyone, Goober from FactionFiles.com here, and uh, this is going to be the first in a series that I'm planning to do of some little mini tutorials, uh, you know, one, two, maybe three minutes long, just showing a basic feature um, of the editor, um, just for people who are, you know, just wanting to get into the editor and uh, not really sure where to start or having trouble with a, like a, a specific uh, item. So uh, for this, uh, I just have a little room set up here um, with two hallways going into it and some door frames. And we're, uh, we're just going to go through making a, a basic door uh, and how you do that. So basically we're going to approach this, uh, this door frame here um, for this hallway that leads nowhere. Um, and uh, the door is going to open and then when we go past it's going to close again. So the first thing to do for this, I'm just going to create a new brush. Um, so I'm going to go up into my top viewport here. I'm going to make a solid brush. Um, this door is going to be four meters high because that's the height of the hallway. The hallway is four meters wide, so I'm going to make it four meters wide, and I'm going to say 0.5 meters uh, for the door, just because that seems like it would uh, be a good idea, and it'll fit in the middle of, uh, if you look at it here, it'll fit in the middle of the, the lines on this girder texture here for the door frame. So I'm just going to make that solid brush and then build. Now, as you can see, We've got uh, we've got a door here now. Obviously, because it's uh, it's a solid brush at the moment, it's just a wall, so you can't actually see the door frame. For uh, for just the texturing and stuff, I'm just going to move this out into our main room here, so we can see all the sides of it. I'm going to move it up a bit as well. There we go. So we can see all the sides of our door here now. So first things first, let's uh, let's go and texture this. Now, because this is going to be in a door frame, we're not actually going to be able to see the uh, the top or the sides of it. So because of that, I'm going to put an invisible texture on those. Um, basically, the invisible texture is not rendered in the game, um, so it's it's not an additional phase or it's not additional faces for the game to have to render. Um, so it, it'll help your performance. Now, in a map like this, obviously that doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just kind of to be neat. It's the best practice to get into because if you start making maps where there's a lot of stuff going on, you're gonna want uh, you're gonna want the added performance. The engine doesn't run that well these days anyway, um, so you want to give it all the help you can. Um, so I'm just gonna select the bottom here. I'm gonna get a door texture. Uh, what texture? Are we going to use, um, I'm going to use this, I think. Yeah, I'll use this. So for the bottom here, I'm just going to use UV Unwrap and I'm just going to do something that, uh, something that looks kind of good. Um, I'll just use something in the middle here. That looks fine. This is going to be for the bottom of the door. So this is what the player is going to see if they uh, if they look up after uh, after opening the door. So yeah, that looks fine for the bottom. And now for the two sides, oops, uh, we just want to directly align that. I'm going to copy the UVs from that, paste it on this side, and hit apply. That will work. And uh, now we have our door textured. So actually, I'm going to flip this just so that this design here is on the same side on both sides. That's just me being pedantic. It doesn't really matter, but anyway. Um, so now I'm just going to move this door back into its rightful place here. Now, first thing you're going to see um, is the edges here aren't visible, obviously. Now, um, it doesn't really matter if you do this. Uh, I'm just going to tick it as detail and hit build. Um, that basically just takes it out of the render order for the rest of the map. So you can like you can see around it. It also means that the door won't be geoable. That's going to happen anyway when I make it into a mover. I just like doing it anyway because you get a good idea what's going on. So I'm just going to go over. Hang on, I should back up. So I'm going to go from brush mode here. I'm going to go to group mode. I'm going to create a new group, and when I do this, whatever is selected is going to be in my new group. So my brush is all I have here now, so I'm just going to make a new group. I'm just going to call it Dora1, do not really matter what you uh, name that. Uh, it'll show up here under User Defined Groups, and if you notice, you expand it out, it's got a brush inside of it. So now, and nothing's really changed. Now, I'm going to select my User Defined Group, and I'm going to hit Keyframe. This is going to change it into a moving group, and you can see that the edges of the door turn black. They were green before for a detail brush. Um, movers are black. So now that I've got that keyframe created, I'm just going to select the keyframe here. If you notice in brush mode, you can select objects and brushes. It doesn't really matter because I'm only going to the properties of this. So there's no properties on the brush. So I'm going to go to the properties of this keyframe. Now I'm going to tick is door here. Um, there's some subtle behaviors that this is important for. Uh, you could get away with doing a door without this, but it usually works better if you do. Uh, ping pong once is going to be my behavior for my door. 
my start sound, uh, you can go through the audio.vpp file and find something that you like, or you can copy from an existing map. I went back and I found these earlier, so I'm just going to use these and put it under start sound and close sound. Important note on this, if it's a double door, like you have one door moving on either side, you probably want to put the sound only on one of them, because otherwise you're going to hear the sound twice and it's going to sound really bad. So departing travel time, this is going to be the time it takes my door to open. I'm just going to, and this is the time it takes it to close. So I'm just going to put that to 0.25. Um, I know that's a decent number. We can always change it later. Uh, and now for the ending position of my door, I'm going to expand out moving groups here. And again, I'm going to hit keyframe. And when I do, you're going to see a keyframe appear here. It's kind of annoying that it appears in the exact same place because you won't really notice it at first maybe. But uh, anyway, so this is a silver keyframe now, which is a destination. The gold is the origin. So I'm just going to move this one up. Uh, now that is moving it up four, um, and this is going to be basically the center of the mover. So wherever this gold thing is here, the gold key, uh, in relation to your door mesh, the door mesh is going to be moved to wherever the silver key is in the same position. Uh, I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit from four up because I don't want my door to go completely flush with the ceiling. So I'm going to bring it down uh, 0.5. So this door, when it goes up, is going to sit 0.5 meters below the ceiling. And now on the second keyframe here, the only thing I'm really going to set in here is pause time. This is the amount of time that the door is going to be up for before it closes after you get out of the uh, the trigger that we're going to make for in a second. So I'm just going to set that to one second. Now, our door itself is done now. The problem is there's no way to activate it. Um, I can show you that. So I'm just going to save this to single, sure. And I'm going to pack that. If I just play it, As you can see here, this is my door, and I can just walk into it, absolutely nothing happens. So, um, now we are going to make a trigger for this. So, I'm just going to go to my world origin, just so I don't need to grid align my, uh, my trigger. I'm going to double click trigger door here, and I'm going to move this up, center it on my door, uh, just because I want to. I'm just going to expand out that trigger region a little bit so that the door will open when you get a little... Uh, you don't have to get quite as close. Um, trigger resets here. Uh, keep this at uh, minus one times. That's the amount of times the trigger is going to reset after you trigger it. And resets after. I'm going to set this to one second because that is the pause time of that. For a door, I guess it doesn't really matter if you set this to like zero. It just can't really be more than 1.5, I guess, because that's the travel time for the door. So I'm just going to set it to one. Um, and these options down here, I don't need to worry about any of that. Um, if I wanted the door to only open when you press the use key, I would tick this right here, but I'm not doing that right now. I just want it to trigger when you walk into it. So I'm just going to do that. Now, uh, actually, I moved that up a bit too soon. Um, so the first thing that or the thing that I need to do to make this trigger actually open our door um, is called object linking. So to do that, I'm first going to select the trigger and then I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select the gold key. Now I'm going to press the K key on my keyboard. So when I do that, you'll see that this arrow appears between the trigger and the keyframe. That means that, and the order that I selected these in is important, that means that the first object I selected and the second object I selected are linked. However, the order that they are linked in is the first object is linked to the second object. Whereas the first object is a trigger, the second object is a keyframe, that means that the trigger is going to trigger the keyframe. Now I'm just going to move this over that again. I didn't want to do that because you couldn't really see it. Uh, and now if I save this and I hit pack, I'm going to play my map. And now when I walk into my door, as you can see, it opens. That's probably a little too quick actually for this type of door. Uh, as you can also see, this is one of the things that the is door flag did. As long as I'm standing within this trigger, the door is not going to close. But if I back up, then it's going to close. So now the player can walk down this hallway. Just uh, because that's annoying me, I'm going to change this time to say 0.75 because that's a little too quick. And you can play with these values and you can make any type of door, any size door, whatever you want. There you go. So there is our door. Anyway, I uh, hope this tutorial was useful. Uh, if it was, leave a comment. Uh, check factionfiles.com for other tutorials and other maps and groups and other help. Um, we also have a Discord group that I'll link down in the description that you can join if you're looking for some help or just want to talk to other uh, Red Faction fans and Red Editor users. Uh, anyway, with that, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.